Alright, welcome everyone. Uh, my character name is Lilira Sarim. I'm a teacher with Eve University, uh, current manager as well in the events department. And this is my first attempt at live streaming uh, a class that is hopefully going to benefit a great deal uh, from actually streaming it. This is Court Mechanics 101. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. So, because this is a live stream, uh, I may have some odd audio issues just here and there as things uh, pop up that I don't catch right away. Uh, so forgive that, but hopefully the stream itself will be uh, pretty consistent and fairly easy to see and make a good archive for the future. So the last time I offered this class was about in January, I believe. And uh, at the time, I didn't have the opportunities for streaming. Um, I tried to do like a screenshot slideshow. Uh, it didn't really work out, and of course there were uh, technical issues with both Mumble and with uh, CC at the time. Uh, so it didn't work out very well. A lot of work after that to try and piece it all together it didn't work out very well. So now we have kind of the all-in-one package of uh, live streaming through the client on Twitch, and hopefully that will be much better. So, uh, based on what I can see here, everything looks good. And I'm just going to carry on through and if there's any glitches we'll just have to pause and we'll edit that out later. Alright, so I'm going to uh, talk about uh, fundamentally the, the basics of setting up a corporation, um, a lot of the issues with dealing with the UI, sort of the, the in-game costs associated with that. Um, if you happen to be logged in on CC right now, you can feel free to follow along. If you happen to be on an alt account and you either have CEO roles or want to create a new account on Tranquility, that's totally fine as well. Feel free to follow along. Um, at the most, you'll just be spending a little bit of money uh, if you're not on the test server. So the main uh, topics we're going to cover in this class is creating a corporation, uh, recruiting members, uh, using roles and titles, uh, asset management, shares and voting, uh, war declarations, uh, standings and how that affects uh, the roles of a corporation, uh, joining an alliance, uh, closing a corporation, and Q&A. And in between there we'll deal with uh, issues like assets, uh, setting up the wallets, um, setting up hangar divisions, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, right now I'm just going to add to the stream uh, some useful information here for you. So here is the Corporation Mechanics 101 page on the UniWiki. So this is the syllabus that I'll be going through for the bulk of things today. So feel free to uh, find that find that around. You can just Google UniWiki Corp Mechanics 101. That should come up fairly soon. And there's also a more advanced page that's Still a bit of a work in progress is the Corporation Corp Mechanics here. Um, a lot of this stuff is still fairly current. Some of the screenshots are a little bit out of date. But as far as actually going through a lot of the individual uh, topics, that's uh, one of the better resources we have. Um, most importantly, this has sort of a breakdown of all the roles. And I'll be going through some details uh, from this page in particular uh, as we go through. And last but not least, we have also a fairly good Evilopedia page. Let's see here. Corporations. Yeah, so the last link I'll share here is the Corporation Management Guide on Evilopedia. Uh, you can tell from these screenshots that they are quite a few versions ago, uh, but fairly useful. Um, this particular page, I believe, the last time that I logged in, it may have been uh, publicly editable. 
Uh, it just has some some basic uh, details for how to do certain things, and there's there's a fair bit of overlap in between the UniWiki and this one. But again, it is it is a third fairly comprehensive uh, source of information, and ideally. Everything on the Evilopedia should be kept current by GMs and such if there's a, a major issue. But it also talks, goes into details about things like the politics and metagaming and spying and things like that. So those three pages are really quite useful. And um, in terms of the, uh, I'll, I'll provide these links in the forum thread as well. Uh, if you need to get through that, if you aren't able to see it clearly on the stream. <laughs> Alright, so no complaints about the uh, the audio or the video so far, so I will just get right going here. So in order to create a corporation, uh, start from the very bottom, uh, you need to be in an NPC corp. Uh, right now my character is in the default NPC corp for my Galante race, which is Scope. And just by opening the corporation window, which is here on the Neocom, uh, just with the five stars around it, very similar to the Concord logo. Uh, that'll just pop open the window, and I've just got it filling the screen here. So this is all the details for uh, an NPC corporation, uh, which is, of course, you know, not very relevant in terms of things you can actually do. It's kind of nice that it tells you sort of where all these particular cor uh, corporation stations are. And if you were in a large player corporation, all this information would also uh, tell you where your own stations are. That's more applicable to players and no. But uh, you can see the basics are always the same. So we have the CEO, person in charge of the corp, the headquarters, the station where they're uh, theoretically located, a ticker name, which is sort of the short call sign for a corporation, uh, number of shares. Number of shares for an NPC corporation is naturally very large to keep in with lore. For players, it's uh, not quite as relevant. We'll talk a bit about that. Uh, tax rate, which is the main reason people want to get out of NPC player uh, corporations because tax rate's so high at 11% and whether membership applications are enabled. Now, I won't go into NPC corporation mechanics, but basically um, whether or not a corporation has its applications enabled determines whether or not you can actually apply to become a member. All right, so the other tabs here on the corp interface are recruitment. This is where you would search for corporations to actually join. Um, there's just uh, a lot of defaults that are uh, presented here, and if you actually wanted to narrow down a search to do other things, you could do that. You could just do straight searching. Let's look for Eve University. And that'll pop up a big list of everything that's fairly uh, similar. And we happen to be certain that this one is the one that is our corporation. And if you wanted to apply to one, then the apply to join button is just there. So you all probably had experience with that. But say you want to actually create one. So that's a different issue. So right now, when we're at the home option, we have the option of create new corporation. And right away it'll say, all right, sure, this is totally fine. And you have this just nice little box here of what you want your name to be. So I'm just going to go with the same one I did last time. fairly appealing, let's say 2.5% there. Homepage, again that's just information that people can access. Um, if you actually have a website set up. All that kind of information. So the issue when you have uh, corporations that have names that are existing is a matter of um, is a matter of errors that come up when basically it won't necessarily tell you very clearly if something's already taken. So we might get lucky here, we might not, um, if this name is or isn't already taken. Uh, I won't reveal that I've actually uh, searched for it before. But uh, most important to a lot of people is having, of course, a good corp logo. And this is where you get uh, your access to start tweaking that. Uh, the corp logo interface is pretty rudimentary, I would say. The um, reason a lot of corp logos tend to look fairly familiar is because there are only so many choices. Uh, let's choose something, let's see here, something relevant. 
to our corp name there. So you have all the same kind of clip art uh, functions. The advantage here is that you get to layer things. So we're able to choose every single layer uh, and try it some different ways here. So let's do that. Let's do uh, something a little bit more. I like that actually with the little, little fangs around the edge there. And we can keep that consistent or a bit more standout. And for the last one here, let's go. So it's a little visible. So you can see that the way this is actually uh, dealing with uh, the layering is that the top one will be the actual top layer. Um, so in terms of how you want the graphics to interact with each other, uh, this is the order that you'd be concerned with for um, how it's actually going to stack on top of each other. And then let's just plop the background there as the last one. You can actually tweak and play with filters uh, just for intensity and variety here. Um, now it's a good, good point here to notice that uh, the actual swatches here for color picking don't actually reflect the fact that a lot of these are gradients. Um, so it's just sort of giving you a rough idea of the color you're doing, but you will have to try pretty much everything to, to be confident about what you're getting. And there we go, so that's the three we get. And let's see how this works. Corporation ticker name is taken. So, let's try what everyone in Eve does, add dots to the name. Also taken. There we go. So in order to avoid that, searching what you're actually uh, trying to do first, you can also search by ticker name as well as corp name. Uh, doing all that research in advance is very good. There are a lot of websites to help with that. The in-game method is okay, um, but websites like evewho.com uh, are really good for that. So we've now successfully created uh, the actual corporation we want. Um, this modal window is blocking our option for the wallet, but we'll quickly show you uh, what is there? Would you like to select a corporation wallet? So this is the default saying that in order to spend corp money you now need to choose a wallet. So we're just gonna say okay and we're gonna say master wallet and here's the rest of our divisions. And without much further ado, that's that. So now here we can see that the corporation registration fee uh, which was just now so one point, approximately 1.6 million ISK and it appears that it's double charged me uh, because the first uh, time didn't work so that's another risk to be concerned about so if you can get it right the first time chances are you'll be a lot happier but now that we are part of a corporation we now have options for the corporation wallet and because we're the CEO we have a great deal many more tabs we'll get to that uh, fairly soon but just wanted to show that while we're here So. Now we have uh, full corporation access. We're now the CEO of a brand new corporation. Uh, if we wanted to look at what the details are for everyone. So let's go into the basic corporation information here. So we have, bring that back forward. So we have the basic corporation information here, which is uh, now giving us as our headquarters in Leibold. I'm currently docked in a Leibold station. So wherever you decide to create a corporation, that's where your headquarters will be. Um, it means almost nothing, um, but for a vanity sake, if you wanted to have corporation headquarters in one particular place, you should absolutely go to that place first. Um, if you want your corporation headquarters to be in G244, for example, I've never tried it, but if you wanted uh, it to be somewhere where you can't possibly afford an office, uh, that's how you would do it. And at some point in the future, if you wish to change the location of your headquarters, you will not be able to do it unless you have an office. So basically your first, first one is free, and uh, just for vanity's sake, if you want to pick where the headquarters are, be where you want that to be. Alright, so now we have all the information we entered in the original box. We have our CEO and founder. Uh, in case those two things are not different, we have our official ticker name, default 1,000 shares, initial member count, tax rate and no actual website entered for the information there. Here I can see that I'm the only member. Uh, an external person uh, cannot necessarily see this tab, but if you're in the corp you are able to see what the membership is. Uh, standings, we have basic uh, standings between myself and the corp against itself. 
Uh, that doesn't apply at the moment. We'll get into diplomacy a little sooner. Alliance history uh, doesn't reflect anything if you're not part of an alliance. It just simply tells you where the corporation was founded. And more history if you're brand new, you won't have any uh, experience with that. And just like uh, many other things, the little plus sign up here is if you wanted to place a bounty on your own corporation because, uh, well, why not? Makes you more attractive. Uh, all right. So again, this is this is the information that anyone will see now that your corporation has been created. All right. So we get much of the same information as we did before looking at the NPC because we haven't paid for any offices because we don't own any stations in Nilsec. All that information is empty. So we'll now be going into other things. So now that we have a recruitment tab, we can't we can not only search for other corporations, but we now have the option for having corporation adver advertis advertisements, uh, as, my, as my British side would say. Um, so this is necessary to actually create uh, postings uh, if you want people to be able to search what your corporation is. Um, you can do this uh, just through the pop-up box here, just creating a title, message to recruits. This is essentially what people have dedicated recruiters for uh, managing this information. Um, the kinds of filters that you want if you want to make yourself searchable in a certain way. Time zone, all that stuff, almost identical to the, uh, the actual search functions. Uh, recruiters, you're able to designate uh, people who are shown as recruiters, essentially designating who is official in your corporation uh, to be considered a recruiter. And anytime someone views that ad, they will know exactly the people that you have selected uh, are able to recruit. Um, so if you want to minimize the risks of scams, if you want to have people that you trust uh, doing this kind of thing, that works. Uh, the recruitment channel is useful. Um, if you've actually created a public chat channel um, that you own, that the game recognizes you own, it will give this option here. And then you'd be able to say, okay, this is the official one that uh, people can join. So we're not going to worry about that one right now. Applications too. this would be where you would see the list of names, people that applied and their reasons. Um, all of that is dependent on the method of uh, recruitment that you choose to do. Smaller corporations typically just use the apply to method uh, without having a complicated uh, website process. And let's go into members here. So with the member list we have uh, again very similar to what you'd see in your current corporation such as EV University where you have a list of people who are online, uh, not offline, you can have options for titles, you can filter people by roles, we'll talk about roles fairly shortly. Just want to go through the basic tabs here. Standings, this is very similar to your people and places tab, this is just the corporation version of all that. You can see the similarities there. And corporation standings apply to everyone who is in your corporation, so that is more important for um, diplomacy issues and making sure that everyone has the right uh, the right color tags and they recognize blues versus versus reds or oranges. And then here, uh, when you have liked by and disliked by, this is again very similar to your personal standings uh, here. So this is the information that it will pull um, after the way that uh, corporation standings mechanics work is that when someone has been in the corp for a week. Uh, it will then take an average of what their standings are and apply that to the corporation and then it will keep averaging that as people come and go from the corporation. Um, this is fundamentally the reason why that we require in EP University that you can't have standings with two certain corporations because if you do that will upset the average and that average affects uh, the fact that everyone can get jump clone standings. So in the like by dislike by this is where that information is relevant uh, and it'll just do an aggregate of each member is standings for each corporation, each faction, um, and uh, has that has consequences for everyone else in the corporation. But you do get, uh, I, I believe it's uh, seven days, seven day grace period before that kind of thing is uh, is applied, if they haven't changed that. Okay, the wars tab, um, again this is something fairly familiar. Uh, to those in EV University, so if you're not involved in any wars, that'll be blank. The All Wars simply just gives you the entirety of the game's active wars. So if you actually wanted to browse through things, or you can actually search through, okay, who actually wants assistance uh, for those kinds of things. And then if you decide, okay, well, I'd like to help these ones here, I'd like to help one of these guys, so you can check their war report, find out, okay, which side's doing better, which side actually wants help. 
and then you can say, well, sure, we'll offer assistance. And then you can choose to send money as well, if you like. And kill reports. This is the corp-wide kill loss record. So any kills or losses that occur while you're in corporation will be collected under there. Politics tab. We'll get into this uh, much more detail a bit later. Uh, votes and sanctionable actions. Um, so the Eve, uh, CCP has tried to model uh, corporation mechanics relatively uh, close to business um, business methods that includes some voting processes. Um, I won't jump into it right now. We'll come to it very soon. But uh, just safe to say that there are a few things that are useful, and the majority of it is not very useful. But we'll talk about those edge cases as well. Uh, corporation assets. If you have the correct roles, uh, you are able to see, in fact, uh, everything that's stored in corporation offices, uh, corporation hangers. Um, you have the option for browsing through all of those. Works just like the assets window. Impounded means if an office has not been paid for, uh, the NPCs of the game will seize all your assets and impound them. Uh, and you have to pay a fee to get those items released. Uh, the serious disadvantage to that is that if your items are impounded and you pay to release them, all of your stuff gets tossed back in one hangar. So all the work you did uh, to tidy up your hangars, to put everything in nice little separate divisions, all of that gets dumped in the alpha hangar, and they say, there you go. It's like, it's like you see in the movie, it's just like, here's all your junk. So very good to avoid uh, not paying your bills in time just because of the hassle of sorting those assets out. Uh, in space, if you have things that are anchored on behalf of your corporation, those will be flagged here. That includes uh, things like towers, arrays, uh, containers, that kind of thing. Uh, deliveries. Deliveries reflects uh, market uh, deliveries in particular. So, actually that's not the right one. Let's go to inventory. So once you have the appropriate roles in a corporation, uh, you actually have a second hanger uh, slot called market deliveries. Anything that's paid for by the corporation straight out of a corporation wallet goes into this hanger instead of your personal items hanger. And this is where this is all collected. Uh, lockdown, I believe lockdown is uh, associated with things like um, uh, things like locking down blueprints, that's the main mechanic for that. I'll double check that as we get to more detail. And then here's just an option you can search. And you get a few more uh, filters rather than just the straight assets menu, uh, whereas you would only get a few options here. So just a little bit more power because you're expected to potentially have a little more assets. And the alliances tab. So if you are part of an alliance, uh, this will give you information about, you know, again, here's all the current ones, here's the CCP Alliance. Uh, so we're able to look at those, and again, just like applying to a corporation, applying to an alliance uh, is a normal process. Uh, we can actually apply to join. So, dear CCP Helmar, I'd like to join your alliance, please. Thank you very much. Uh, we won't bug CCP Helmar today. But uh, again, it's the exact same process as uh, applying for a normal corporation. Uh, it's contact. So again, just all, all related to diplomacy and a bit more layering uh, for that. Okay. So that is the fundamentals of the corp interface. Uh, now we're going to get into a little bit more detail here and go back to the syllabus a bit and talk about uh, some frequently uh, necessary things and ways you want to actually set up your corporation, uh, details, um, and I've got a few advanced questions here, uh, and I'll try to integrate all that as I go through. Uh, so I'm also going to take a quick break to check if there's any questions in the chats here. Good to go. 
So another issue that comes into uh, affecting corporations is the skills that you have. And we're just going to go right back to the beginning. So our corporation home tabs here. Uh, we're not going to deal with bulletins right just yet. But if you go to details and you have edit details. So you can see here that uh, this is where you're actually able to make some minor tweaks if you decide you want to be uh, a little bit more scary uh, in your logo. Those are uh, possible changes you can make. Um, actually, I'll do that. So here we have member limit. So currently my member limit is 60 and that is because uh, my character has corporation management trained up to 3. So corporation management is a required skill, it's a very simple skill to actually train. Um, I think it has, tell looks like it has no actual prerequisites. So you can train it right away, but uh, it only adds 20 people per level. So you know if you're starting on a very small corporation, of course you only need one level, and as you grow uh, you will get uh, additional uh, skills that you need to train to make the corporation larger and larger and larger. So the notice here is that CEO must update the corporation through the user interface before the skill takes effect. And that is exactly what we're looking at right here, so update with my skills. So any so this, uh, this member limit is now static. This will stay the same until the CEO has a different skill set than this and clicks this button. So if you wanted to grow your corporation, you can see here, well in this case, diplomatic relations doesn't help too much, not anymore. Uh, diplomatic relations, just trivia, it uh, used to be a skill that actually, um, uh, that actually allowed you to have multiple races in the game. Way back at the beginning of the game, uh, originally you couldn't, your corporation had to be racially pure. Um, and as you would train up this diplomacy skill, uh, you could allow more percentages of other corporations. And I, I think they got rid of that in a hurry, probably for good reason. So as you can see, if you keep just checking uh, the requirements for five, so you can see it just keeps going up. So you have Megacorp Management, uh, which then starts to add 100 per level. And then we get up to Empire Control, which is 400 per level. Then we get into Sovereignty which is then 2,000 per level. Uh, at the point you get up to Sovereignty, um, that, that is essentially the max level. At that point, um, you're able to do quite a bit more uh, in the game, and there are some, uh, there are some uh, special uh, null sec and Sovereignty uh, items that require having this skill in order, to, in order to function properly. So when it comes down to you know, actually being able to create alliances and actually function in nullsec areas, uh, some of these skills actually are prerequisites for certain items, and that's again a little bit more, a little bit beyond the scope of this class. But those are all the skills that are relevant. And then again, if you need to do that, then you just have to come up here. And if you forget to do that, um, it won't, you won't be able to add people past this limit. Um, it's good to mention that if you are in a small corp and you do wish to have have this increased without training those skills, um, there are players in the game who will, for a fee, potentially, um, or with Estelle Howard, or they don't charge a fee, uh, it is possible to temporarily have someone come be your CEO and update it with their skills and then leave. So if you have an alt or have a friend or have someone that you trust who you're willing to uh, let tinker with this stuff, it's possible to do that and then you are able to become the CEO again. So if you don't have those skills available but you do need the abilities that those skills grant, um, that's another option. Okay, so we're going to close that one, close that one. Alright, and okay, so we're back at the details here. And right now we're going to look at divisions, because divisions is kind of the next most important thing for actually keeping things organized. So this is the interface for actually changing everything at once. So both of these are relevant to assets and to wallet divisions. So if you're looking at your corporation hangers, and I can't because I don't actually have an office yet, um, this is where all of these would be. So all these divisions are essentially the names of the corporate hangers. In Eve University, the examples are Alpha, uh, Theta, Psi, all those kinds of things. They can be anything you like. And then the wallet divisions, again, they can be named all specifically uh, for function um, or simply left alone. 
depending on what your what your needs are for a diverse need. And those options are showed not through the corp interface, but through the wallet interface. And that's where the wallet divisions are there. Same settings. So all those can be selected. Um, personally, uh, for my own things, I like having things that are grouped by uh, that are grouped by function. So I like ships and modules to have their own thing. I like uh, to have industry uh, things that actually collect a lot of assets. Not everything does. Um, let's see materials. So that would be like ore and PI. And then here, your wallet divisions can be related to operations. So typically I'll have a general. And I might have one for trading. Uh, so trading qualifies as markets. And then again, I can have research. So again, just thinking about where the actual functions of the game um, are going to need money. Uh, and uh, there are lots of ways to just keep keep your keep your uh, wallets and your assets in order, and that's all personal preference. Uh, one of the things that uh, was suggested to me is we'll set up um, some sort of uh, templates for how you might want to configure your corporation, uh, just to give people an idea of okay what 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 are all the options that I might want to consider. Um, just like we have ways to organize your assets, we might, might set up uh, some templates for configuring your corp. So we'll do all that, and then we can see that all those changes have been reflected into the corporation wall hangers. Sort that to the top. All right, so while we're dealing with the corporation wallet, uh, let's have a look at some of the exclusive options here. Uh, before we do that, let's go. Let's do what the most uh, pertinent thing is here, which is actually look at getting an office. So let's see if we have any offices available in Liebold. So in your station services menu, uh, one of your several tabs here is offices. And the office mechanics are uh, pretty interesting. They're, in f they're, they're, they're very flexible depending on demand. So if you try to rent an office in G244 as an example, you will have to pay through the nose. Uh, but they can actually be uh, quite a bit cheaper um, depending on uh, the location, how busy the station is. Uh, the bare minimum fee, I think, is really quite reasonable. Let's see if I can find an example of it in the syllabus here. I think it's getting getting close to... it's, it's less than a million for sure. Uh, there we go. So yeah, the fee is dynamic. No limit to how many uh, offices your corporation can have, but each station caps out at having 24 offices. Um, so assuming that's still current, uh, what happens is as more offices fill up, uh, the rental fee will get higher and higher. So currently we have five spaces available, and our office rental fee is 1.4 million ISK. Now you may encounter stations that have five offices available and the fee will be 40 or 50 million ISK. Again, it, it, it's dynamic based on demand. Um, it calculates things that I don't think have been revealed uh, to the players as far as that goes. But easily it's, it's good to say that the safer, um, or sorry, the more, the more, he the more uh, traffic a station has, uh, the more players it regularly hosts as guests, it, the game probably calculates that as a busier station, more popular, and therefore wants to raise the fees in order to sort of keep offices uh, available. So here we see that it's all for 30 days. And just give you a warning about paying bills, the office will be re repossessed. That includes uh, the uh, impounding uh, I mentioned in the assets before. So in order to do that, you have to accept the fee. But here, no, nope, we can't pay it because now every now we have a corporation, it wants all our money to be in the corporation wallet. Uh, and usually in the master wallet when you're paying for bills uh, charged by NPCs. So we need to give ISK2 from there. So again, here's an example of where you have a variety of options. So in the master wallet we have 
give isk, take isk, transfer, change division. If you're experienced with uh, giving people skill book reimbursements, you'll are familiar with the transfer is button. And if you actually want to put money into it, you have to do give isk there. We have our choices of the accounts there. And we're going to give a nice healthy seed of 25 million isk. That refreshes there. And then we're going to say, all right, let's rent this office already. Yes, thank you. Then we have a bill which uh, comes up in our email notifications. So now we have a record that we've actually registered for 30 days in a particular office. And if we scroll down, I'm not sure if it's an instant update. We'll probably have to undock and redock in order to see our logo in this uh, channel. But regardless, we now have an office for ourselves. We now have corporation hangers. And we now have an office listed there. So that's all done. That's all able to use. And you can see here the corporation hangers that we've named. Now, again, if you have the appropriate roles, you're also able to see things like member hangers. So member hangers will, in fact, be um, the names of everyone who possesses assets in this station. So I'm not sure that I do, but if I did, let's move my complementary tritanium there. Close that, open. That may also be affected by uh, by docking and undocking. We can check that later. But essentially, if you have the right assets, this is a way for you to actually give assets directly from the corporation to individual people. Um, that's how uh, some logistics staff in EV University will do things uh, if they're assigning things to people in Aldrat. So again, it's just, just one more feature for you to do things rather than having to worry about contracts and fees and that kind of thing. It's just a way to actually give assets directly to people. Uh, so corporation hangers uh, can be can be quite complicated to actually set up corporation hangers, but again we'll get into detail and layers here. We'll sort of cover we'll deeper into our second pass now of all the things that you can do, and we'll get into a third before we wrap the class up. All right, so we have all those dealt with. We now have our first office. We're able to you know look and consider uh, at what offices, what assets we might have. All those kinds of things, and again, just functions exactly as the assets window would. So we've dealt with that. We've got some money in our wallet, and you know, we might want to assign and move money around. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. Uh, basically, when you're using the transfer menus, again, this is where things get a bit complicated. Um, it might be difficult to, it might be difficult to, to you know instinctively say, okay, well, I want to transfer money from here to from here, you may actually have to change your division. So you may actually have to force the game to say, okay, I want to start from this wallet. And there you can see that now it is defaulting to my active wallet, and then I can move it around however I like. So again, just, just little things with the UI, they're not quite instinctive, because you, you think that you might be able to choose both, but you actually have to tell the game where I want my money to come from. And if you're dealing with a tremendous amount of assets, this is useful because you know, it means you have to be conscious of it. Uh, you actually have to pay attention to what you've got your settings at. Um, and uh, you know, there's the side that says that extra step you know, may cause more mistakes than it solves. But you know, again, all of this stuff needs to be revamped eventually. So at the moment, uh, we will be dealing with uh, what we have to deal with. All right, so let's continue on with the wallet here. So now that we've actually rented an office, we now have a rental bill. And we've paid the first month, and we immediately have, okay, here's the bill for next time. So if we right-click this entry, we have the option to pay your bill. Uh, receivables, we don't have any money owing to us. There's nothing in the automatically paid because nothing is actually relevant uh, to be set up there. But if we go to automatic pay settings, we now have options, and if you're familiar with EVLOR, uh, this is where uh, you may get into trouble with having uh, rental bills and sovereignty bills and all sorts of things uh, mistakenly not get paid. But fundamentally, this is how this is supposed to work. So we have options for, let's see, a rental bill. I want the rental bill to be paid out of the master wallet. Submit. 
so the spit buttons, all the buttons right at the bottom here can be can be a little bit hard to notice sometimes depending on your color scheme. And then we've set up this automatic pay and now our payable has disappeared and it now appears on the automatically paid tab. So we can still pay this in advance if we want to, but essentially this will not uh, this will not come to uh, be payable until a month from now. So that money does not actually need to be um, in our wallet division until that date. So that's an option, uh, but at that date it will also recalculate how much that bill actually is going to be. Um, so then your next bill uh, can be quite a bit higher. So you do need to allow a certain amount of buffer. Uh, and then the options here are, are identical. If you had sovereignty, if you have a war bill, um, you know you can you can individually choose uh, where these will come from. But uh, you know you still need to be very conscious of how much money you have. So and my my suggestion is that always use the master wallet to pay out any NPC stuff. Um, it's just uh, the vault that's most likely to have. Uh, isk in it, especially if you have characters who are running missions, generating taxes, um, all donations from external players automatically go into the master wallet. So it's just the safest, uh, safest one to have. But you know, you do have that configurability. Uh, so you have the same functionality for your journal and for your transactions uh, within a corporation. Uh, transactions relate specifically to the market. Journal relates to everything. And we have shares, and some of the questions have involved uh, shares. And we'll talk a bit about shares, and we'll also talk about shares as they relate to politics. So, uh, the shares function tries to duplicate um, how, how real life corporations work. And you have the option of, when you create a corp, of Essentially, they're, they're, all, the, all the shares are owned by the corporation. And you have a few different options here. You're able to give money um, to the owners of shares, to the corporation that ha is the share. Uh, you're able to give the shares themselves to any individual player. And you're able to look at the votes that relate to those shares. So all of these mechanics are basically meant to let players have an investment into a corporation. Um, some of the, I would say, bigger scandals in EVE have resulted in, uh, have resulted in share scandals. Um, I think one of the, the major banks uh, had done that. And essentially it's, it's, it's just been something that has proven not to be particularly useful. Um, so I don't think that you'll see very many honest discussions, uh, honest offerings of shares. If a corporation is trying to sell you their shares, um, you should definitely be skeptical. But they do serve uh, functions that are useful, and we'll get and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, as we go here. But if you're the CEO, one of the first things you'll want to do is actually give yourself all of the shares. And this is simply a security feature. And you'll notice the search box doesn't pop up a list of people, it actually just fills the name in if you actually want it. So now all those have disappeared and it now shows that my character is now the owner of all those shares. So it is impossible for these shares to go anywhere else as long as I have them. I have to give them away to someone else. So this essentially cements the ownership of the corporation for you. Um, if this is something that you forget to do and you decide to give one of your friends or give someone else um, essentially a directorship role uh, in your corporation, and you haven't done this, uh, they'll be able to take all those shares and then they will have the, the authority to have full control over your corporation. Because if you have all the shares of a corporation, you can then use the politics tab to overthrow the CEO. And I can speak from experience in this because I have done that. I have overthrown uh, a CEO from a little two-man corp. And it was a perfectly legitimate reason. He had left the game. He had let his uh, account expire. And before he had done that, I simply suggested to him that, you know, could I have a few shares because I'm contributing so much? And he said yes, and it turned out that I could use these mechanics to do exactly what I needed to do, which was temporarily become the CEO, re <laughs> repay the bills on all our offices, and get all our corp assets back, you know, all the while while he was still uh, his account unsubscribed. So doing this has, has in-game functionality that is useful um, in a lot of ways. 
but uh, for security, if you're in charge of your corporation, you want to hang on to all of these. So you can do tokens, for example, like you can give someone one share. Uh, the issue is that uh, I believe the cutoff is 5%. So with 1,000 shares, if you give someone 50 shares, they have 5% of the corporation and they're able to uh, essentially vote in the politics area. And we'll go into that. We'll actually create a vote later. So as long as everyone that you give shares to has less than 5%, and again, that's, that's something that could theoretically change in the future. It is MMO. But uh, if you're just giving people, you know, a couple of shares, you can then do other interesting mechanics, which we'll look at right here. So details, home details, and then dividends. So now we have an option for, do we want to actually pay out uh, dividends to our shareholders? We have choices. We can actually pay out to every member of the corp or just the people who own the shares. Um, and then this can be, you know, an amount as high as you like, as high as what's in the corp wallet. And, you know, again, you can you can choose how that gets split up. But again, that's that's another function for shares uh, to be utilized. Bring that one back. So now we have said, okay, we, we want to be we want to be uh, in full control of this corp. We don't want our shares to go anywhere. Um, and as you go through the game, you may you know end up creating a lot of corporations and collecting a lot of shares. There really is nothing uh, really functional that you can do. This is all part of the meta game. If you actually want to start selling shares to people, start uh, giving things up and and selling them like that's that's all perfectly fine. But uh, the trick is that you know once you have shares, there is no method in the game for those shares to be bought back. You can't force that into someone. You would essentially have to uh, convince them to do it. Um, they're essentially locked in. So that's sort of why it isn't a very popular mechanic is because once they're gone, they're gone. Um, now there are cases where, and again we'll go back into the options for politics here, if you wanted to split your shares, you have that option as well. So now we're going to look at the politics tab. So politics and votes, open votes, we're going to propose a vote. And we want to say okay, select a vote type, create shares. So how many shares do we want? We want to go up to 20,000 shares. So we want to create 20,000 shares. And we'll say we want that to be run day. And we'll say OK. So now this notification has gone out to all the members of the corporation. and. Now it would be possible for people who have voting authority or who have shareholder authority, which at this moment is just one person, um, to be able to actually do that. So again, the politics system is only useful for people who have already been given the power to do that. So if you choose to set up your corporation in a very, very diplomatic way and actually give people, give every person in the corporation a share, which gives them the right to vote, um, you can you can totally do this. Um, you know, I think in the sense of it being uh, a game, it can be a tremendous waste of time. But again, you, you have that functionality built in, and that's what this class is about. So I voted to say, yes, I want to create those extra 20,000. Uh, basically, go from 1,000 to 20,000. And what that will do is, if that happens, um, I need to actually do some testing now that may, may actually create uh, sh shares that are owned by the corp because it won't remove the thousand that I have. So my guess is, and I haven't found anything in the syllabus that contradicts this, is that it would probably create the ones here so then those could be reassigned uh, by anyone in the corporation. Uh, but all it does, all it takes is someone with the largest amount of shares or you know, essentially a lack of people voting to actually say, okay, no, I don't want to create those. So again, the system can be very, very easily gamed. Um, and actually having that control, you know, from a diplomatic perspective is, is, is pretty tricky and I think has proven to be not very, uh, not very useful uh, in EVE just with the nature of uh, how things go. But uh, the, the net effect of that is that you're then, you're then diluting uh, the percentage of control that people have um, so that, uh, you know, now 1,000 and 20,000, you know, that's probably still 
uh, a controlling amount. Um, let's see, 5, 10, yeah, that should be. But um, that would mean that you would have more shares to give out. If you had a tremendous amount of members, you would then have more shares to do. So that's, that's another way to dilute uh, the amount of shares that you have to offer and, again, not have to worry quite so much about, um, about giving up that security, hitting that magic 5% that means that someone can actually uh, vote you out. So let's continue on with uh, the votes. We've now covered shares especially. Um, people can vote to expel members. Um, you can have a general vote. It's just basically a poll. And then pretty common is the lock and unlock blueprints. And this is a very good way to uh, provide extra corp security um, for things that are in certain hangars. And most corporations with a large uh, blueprint original collection will do this um, simply because they want uh, to be in full control of where, um, uh, full transparent control, I should say, of where these you know, multi billion uh, blueprint originals are. Uh, so I can vote to expel myself. You cannot, actually, have that option. Uh, general vote. General vote is actually kind of nice. It, it is basically just like creating a forum poll. And again, if you if you choose to run your corporation that way, if you have enough people that you want to pull their opinions and not have a big email thread, that's an option. So it's an interesting interesting function that I don't think a lot of corporations use, simply because you know effort. <laughs> it's just a little bit a little bit uh, too much trouble. Uh, and then, if you if I was not the CEO, and I had a a, a majority share of that five percent of shares, I could actually vote to. Uh, overthrow the CEO. And again, like I say, I have done that personally. And what that does is that creates a sanctionable action. Now, sanctionable actions are ones that have um, that have penalties, uh, and they also have temporary holding things. So if you actually do get find yourself in the option to uh, overthrow your CEO, you then have actually a cooling down period. If you win, if you are then chosen by popular vote as a new CEO, you actually have a cooling down option and it's possible for you to be kicked out of that vote and it's possible for um, you, you won't actually have full control from the time that you win the vote until a cool down happens. I believe it's 24 hours. Um, again, some of, the, some of the wiki pages would go into more detail on that. Um, it's, it's highly unlikely that most people would encounter that, but again, it's it's something that I had done and it proved to be very, very useful. So, you know, again, mechanics of the game. All right, and I'll just check our syllabus here. Shares voting. Do, do, do. Yeah, so the, the wiki syllabus also indicates that if you do possess over 50%, you can simply just vote yourself into being the CEO again. So we had talked a little, a little bit uh, earlier about um, allowing someone to come into your corp and update uh, your member limits. Um, if you possess all the shares and you allow someone else to be your CEO and they decide not to leave, then you should have the option as the majority shareholder to be able to kick them out. Um, so again, that's kind of a security uh, security layer um, to allow you to do certain things, but still retain control over your corporation. So they have they have thought through a fair bit of this. It's just uh, sort of impenetrable uh, to sort of see what your options are. But uh, moral of the story is, you know, keep give give your shares give those shares to yourself is one of the first things that you do. All right, another quick break to check for questions. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, already getting threats of war decks. That's just fine. So because we're getting threats of war decks, let's look at declaring war on other people. So, Corporation Wars tab. Our war is not involved in any wars. Declare war. Uh, so the way that war, de war declaration mechanics work in EVE is that if you're in an alliance and you're declaring war on another alliance, it has to be at the alliance level. If you're in a corporation and you want to declare war on another corporation, but that corporation is in an alliance and you're not, you have to declare war on the alliance. You're essentially declaring war on the largest political body um, that a corporation belongs to. So, let's 
do what uh, what is often done here. So here is a here is a good example of a little bit tricky in the UI. So search a saleable corporation or alliance. So if we chose to enter Eve University in here, surprise surprise, actual Eve University, the one that we know, is not among the choices because that is not actually a saleable. So we have to be aw at least aware that Eve University belongs to the Ivy League Alliance. Now again, the interface isn't really telling us like what's there, like Ivy League Transport. You know, that's a corporation that does not belong to an alliance. You know, it may very well be associated with uh, with Eve University, but it itself is not an alliance. So we need to actually double check. Okay, what are all these? What are all these people are uh, actually doing? Um, so all these choices it's giving you, these are ones that you can actually declare war on. So you can look very carefully, okay, this is a corporation right up top here. And that one is corporation. You actually have to close this modal window. And this one is an alliance. So if we chose Ivy League, it tells us right at the top this is an alliance. We don't have the choice of declaring any war on any individual members of that alliance. So we have to go for the top. And we can say, OK, I want to declare more there. Click OK. So your corporation is declaring war against this one. It tells you mechanics of the price. Uh, there's a, I suppose, a relatively complicated formula for determining the price of uh, war declaration. Uh, let's see, that is in a different section. Um, yeah, that's, that's on the, uh, the war declaration page on the wiki. And it's essentially a function that depends on the number of uh, the number of corporations. Um, and in the case of Ivy League, which uh, exceeds the maximum of uh, 2,000 uh, that the formula utilizes, uh, we have what is pretty much effectively the maximum uh, war pay uh, war declaration fee, which is in the neighborhood of 458 million ISK. So one of the things that we uh, we sort of discovered recently was that if your corporation is in an alliance and you try to declare war, you may not actually get this 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 message. If you have the money in your wallet and the game thinks you know what you're doing, um, this prompt may not appear. Uh, that was the excuse given to us uh, <laughs> by uh, very recently by a short-term war declaration. Uh, so if you did actually have the money and did that. Um, then you would immediately enter into the war, and all that good stuff would uh, would continue. But if we wanted to pick, say, let's try picking one of the much smaller corporations that just happens to be similar. So here's this one, and so this is corporation to corporation, and it's giving us what is essentially the minimum fee um, of 50 million ISK. So if we had that amount of money in our wallet, then we'd be able to freely engage all those people all those active people in that corporation on the test server. Right. So de war, war de declarations are really quite that simple. Um, once you actually get into a war, again, you have issues of offering assistance, offering allies. You have options of surrender. Again, that's that's more complicated than this class goes into. But uh, once you have those those uh, options, again, uh, another slew of uh, of UI interface uh, issues comes up and gives you different choices to deal with that. Um, if you're interested in, in surrendering to your aggressors and and offering the MISC, that kind of thing. All right, so we've covered wars, politics, assets tab is pretty much done. Alliance tab we really won't be getting into here. Uh, standings, just to reiterate that you know standings is really quite similar uh, to dealing with personal standings. Uh, let's say I wanted to add Estelle. So you'll notice that uh, so there you see I actually was able to drag and drop between windows. That's just a nice little feature that you have. Now you'll notice that if you're part of a corporation, if you have the rules to actually do things, you, it's a little bit different. It's not just choosing uh, the dots. You can actually have a slider here 
Um, and to my knowledge, it's all logarithmic. Most of these uh, sliders are logarithmic. Um, so the reasons why you might want to choose sort of in between um, you know, are the kind of cap over there. So you can have sort of internal reasons why you might want certain percentages rather than a full uh, even stop of standings uh, such as we're used to. But again, just a slight difference in the UI that uh, most people don't normally uh, get to encounter. And then if you check what your standings are here, again you get uh, this little number here that sort of reflects that. And I guess that's, that's a way to have a little bit of granularity in what you're actually doing. So again, if you're a very large, very complicated corporation, you might just appreciate that granularity rather than simply the five stops of standing. And otherwise, it's uh, pretty much the same. And again, these two tabs here won't actually change until uh, the seven downtime or six, seven. The downtimes have uh, set up uh, the aggregate of my personal standings, and anyone else who joins the corp uh, within those within that time frame. All right. So working back. Uh, we've dealt with uh, things like applications, we've dealt with corporation ads. Uh, another thing to deal with is the welcome mail. You get just a little pop-up that uh, is the mail that comes automatically when you join. Um, this is really nice just in terms of orientation. Um, if you have anything like if you already have an office network, if you have information that you want everybody to know, or just to say hi, that, that's, a, that's a nice thing to do rather than leave it blank. It also provides a very handy um, sort of timestamp uh, and note in someone's mailbox that uh, you know, when they actually join a corporation, so that's a bit more helpful for some people than just having it in their notifications. And. We're going to get into what a lot of people uh, now have issues with, which is uh, the member control. Um, this is probably a, a great, great majority of what the time a CEO must spend uh, dealing with, uh, both, both configuring and uh, maintaining. So again, because we only have uh, one corporation right now, if there's anyone actually on CC logged in right now, you're welcome to try and apply to this corporation. Um, if that's uh, easy for you. Uh, you may very well be in the middle of doing your own stuff, so I won't expect that, but I'll definitely keep an eye out. Um, so at this point, you now have a lot of ways to modify things. So let's just look at the fundamentals of, okay, here's someone in my corporation and I want to edit their details. So just through the right click menu, we have see a few extra options because of our roles in the corporation but mainly the important one is edit member and this is actually uh, a fairly common site for most CEOs so what we'll have here this is blank because we're mainly on the test server so we have general so we have essentially the makeup of, uh, of our membership here we're able to sort of see what their their current stats are this is all sort of pulled from the API we have information for the titles. Uh, this title box in particular is just a free text field. And this is essentially what vanity titles are um, in this box. And if we clicked apply there and I looked at myself, I looked at my actual character info, I would then be able to see, okay, these are the titles that I've been given. So this is where vanity titles are. Um, and vanity titles are quite different from actual role titles, and we'll get into that uh, very shortly. Uh, you can assign a base. Um, base is very important in terms of assigning uh, role management at locations. Uh, it generally doesn't matter for a lot of cases, but if you're being very picky about your integration of roles and, and abilities, uh, it can be quite useful. And. Uh, I can look here and see all the aggregate roles that we have because I'm the CEO um, or if I was a director uh, I would essentially have all of these checked by default. Now a lot of people wonder about the difference between roles and grantable roles. This basically is what you have and this is what you're able to give. So again this comes down to being able to give people the right to do your job, to 
assign other roles. So if no one but you has grantable roles, then no one else but you is able to give people the authority to do other things. Titles, this is all titles because the CEO automatically has all titles. All these are blank because we haven't got to that tab yet. And role summary is possibly the most useful one to double check that uh, someone has, has the correct roles that you wanted to give them. In this case, everything is, is automatic for the CEO. So we're gonna cancel that and we're going to double check. All right. So if you had a large list of people, you can actually search and filter for people uh, that have specific roles. This is very good if you're trying to troubleshoot issues, like why doesn't someone have the ability to access a CAN in a third office? Um, you know, why are people having trouble getting access at the Starbase? You can essentially pull down like what is the correct function that they should have and by doing this search find out whether or not that person has it. So this is kind of what I consider the troubleshooting tab. Um, if you want to know what someone has or why someone doesn't have what they should, this is how you would essentially narrow it down uh, just by using the in-game UI without having to desperately ask for help. Uh, let's see, implied roles there. So here it re reinforces that directors and CEO automatically has all roles. Those are the people in charge, though they have the keys to everything. Uh, let's see, role manager list, task manager list. So there really is a lot of power and authority here because roles and, uh, and titles are such a huge part of the game, such a huge part of being able to function inside a corporation. And it really does take a great deal of time to sort of get all these details ironed out. And um, if you get to the point where you do have multiple people in your corporation and you're able to say, okay, this is, I see why these issues are, are cropping up because you can compare uh, between one person and another what roles they have, um, that's much easier. If you're in a, in a solo corp, if you're dealing with all this by yourself, you never have to think about it. Count yourself lucky. All right. So this role management tab is, again, is, is kind of a good summary of everything that could be that could be assigned. You have roles, grantable roles, and titles. So this role management is how you would assign people sort of in a mass list. This could be a list of you know 500 people. This would be how you'd actually give tweak people individually, give them very specific roles separate to what their titles might grant. So my advice, especially if you're in a small corporation, um, is to treat role management as something that you don't want to deal with. Whenever possible, you want to assign roles by title, because once you get into role management, you get into the game having to compare uh, and find out conflicting things. So it's possible to give someone a role by a title, but then deny them something else. It's possible to deny them a role by title and then grant them role management. It just it just adds complexity that is ever more compli ever more difficult to track down the uh, the, res the result of. Um, and if you want to make further changes to them, it just gets to be a huge, huge headache. So this is why we, we sort of consider this to be a, a bit on the voodoo side. So whenever possible, you know, try to ignore this particular role, this particular tab, and instead use title management. Title management is fortunately straightforward, not only because of it being a nice, tidy little UI, uh, but the fact that you have a lot of uh, very easy access to what functions are. So, at this point, um, I am going to be reiterating from, I'll just bring this up in the game browser again, just once more to remind people. So this Corporation Corp Mechanics page uh, has a great deal of the information for what individual roles are. So I'll just be uh, talking through a lot of these. All right. So first of all, we notice that by sorting, we actually have uh, the old awkward numeric sorting. So we have one followed by 10 and two down here. So I'm not really interested in this. I just want this to be um, something a bit more intuitive, like say producer. And then I want this to be personnel. And then trader. And then diplomat. 
Fortunately, it doesn't matter. You don't have to actually uh, edit these in any particular order. Um, it'll the list will constantly be resorting. And let's see anything else that's useful. Um, let's say logistics. All right. So anytime you make significant changes, be sure to click save. That'll run through. It'll resort things. Um, this is also a very good point to mention um, that when you occasionally in game you'll see people with colors in their titles. Um, this is that screen. This is where you actually assign colors to people. Um, now I won't get into it uh, too deeply here because it involves a lot of copy pasting, but essentially if you wanted to give someone that role you have to enter, um, I think it's, this isn't going to be quite accurate, but you essentially have to have a a series of HTML codes, and it's actually quite particular. So again, the example I'm giving isn't going to be one I'm going to apply. But if you want to give someone uh, a color in their title, this is the option that you have to do it, and you only have 16 possible uh, titles that can be colored. So for a little bit of extra extra vanity in their title, uh, this is where you would deal with that. And there are a couple guides online. Uh, I think certainly in the uh, syllabus pages should have that information. If they don't, I'll try and make sure it's in there. But um, yeah, anytime you see someone with a colored title, it's because it is an official corp title. It isn't a vanity one purely. Or at least it means they had space for that. Okay, enough of that. Now, we're going to get into sort of what are the main functions. So a lot of things are fairly self-evident. So a diplomat, you know, that makes sense that they'd be involved in communications. It makes sense that they'd want the diplomat title. Um, probably nothing else. So you can sort of, you know, make a fair bit of just gauges and guesses looking for things. All right, so someone in personnel should probably be a personnel manager. And you can make a lot of these, you know, just if you're just stumbling along, just thinking, okay, well, Starbase obviously has to be fuel and defense, and um, and then what? Equipment? What? So, again, we're we're getting into kind of the voodoo aspect of, you know, how does all this stuff apply to each other? So again, we have to go to these resources. So we're actually going to talk about these one by one, because this is going to be uh, going to be. Uh, fairly comprehensive uh, class by the time we're done. So, we've established what uh, the base of an operation is. We've established that if someone actually has a base uh, in a particular station, uh, they are going to get particular roles. So, and again, we have two choices here, real roles and grantable roles. So I can say that someone who is a diplomat is able to give communications uh, officer as an ability. So you can see very, very gradually all these boxes are being unchecked when I switch that. So again, if this was entirely blank, this would mean that no one is able to grant roles based on their titles. So again, be very conscious of the, the options that you're on here in the UI. So we're going to look at some of these as well, so the types. And every time you change these, the list will change. So this is why this tab is much, much nicer than the role management tab, is because you actually do have a lot more control. And it's a lot more clear. All right, so we're going to go through these one by one. So strap in. All right, general. Accountant. Accountant can view court bills and edit automatic pay settings. They can view the balance in the journal of all wallet divisions. They can view all transactions made using the corp wallet, but they cannot view the shareholders of the corp. Despite the user interface claiming you must have the role accountant to view this data. So again, we have some established, uh, established information that the UI may lie to you. So do not get too frustrated if some of this stuff doesn't work the first time. It will probably take a fair bit of bashing it with a fairly large hammer uh, to get it exactly the way that you want it. And ideally, your corp will be growing at a pace that is, uh, that is tolerable for the amount of uh, stress and the amount of sort of maintenance that you're going to have to be doing. Uh, the auditor can view the date action initiator of any changes made to member roles. So in fact, the auditor is related to personnel. So now that we know that, we want the personnel 
person to actually have this role as well. Communications officer can add, edit, and delete corporation bulletins shown in the corporation window. They can create and edit corporate alliance events in the calendar and edit the channel, uh, the corporation channel message of the day. So that is actually quite important, and we want, let's see, diplomats and personnel to be able to do that. And let's see here. I'd, I'd say that would be the extent of that role in our little corp. Configure equipment required to configure audit log containers in the corp hangars and to unlock items in audit log containers in the corp hangars. The container passwords needed as well, but it must combine, be combined with take access to the appropriate hangar. So now we have a checkbox which is extremely relevant to, let's say, producers, to potentially traders, and absolutely to logistics. But this checkbox doesn't mean enough until we've actually made other changes. So again, this is where the complexity of multiple uh, roles and assignments come into play. Config Starbase equipment can anchor on anchor, online and offline, and configure POS structures belonging to the corp, as well as fuel and ammunition bays. To access structures with corp hangers, hangar access other roles are required. So, people who are in charge of the Starbase need that. And let's say people who are in charge of logistics probably need that as well. And again, there are other tabs that we will have to adjust in order for this to be fully functional. Contract manager can create contracts on behalf of the corporation, must be combined with access to a wallet division to pay the fee, and take to a corporate hangar. So these contracts can only be created on items in a corporate hangar. So essentially, to be a contract manager on behalf of a corporation, you need to have access to a wallet in order to have the money to pay the fee and you need to have access to grab stuff out of the hangar where the contract is being created. So again, layers upon layers. And let's say that logistics and traders and possibly producers, but not in my case. All right. Diplomat can add and edit corporation standings towards player entities, corporations and alliances. Very, very simple, actually. Uh, let's give that to personnel people as well. Fitting Manager can add, edit, and remove recommended corporation ship fittings. Now, the Fitting Manager's role comes into when you're in the Browse list and you choose Corporation Fittings. So if you have a Fitting Manager, they're in charge of those 300 possible corp fittings. So we're going to say that the important people to do that are Logistics, and let's say that's it. Now, Junior Accountant. Junior Accountant is, can view the bills to be paid by the corp and the balance of all the corp wallet divisions, but not the journal or its transactions. So Junior Accountant means very fundamental access to the corporation wallet. So you wouldn't get the entirety of these tabs, you wouldn't get the entirety of viewing everything that's here, but you would at least uh, have the ability to see things like bills, to be paid and you'd be able to see the actual tally of the balances but you wouldn't necessarily have the transactions of the journal so because I'm not about I'm not interested in hiding uh, what money we have I'm willing to give everyone that and we've sort of skipped over accountants because we want to deal with that one first so the accountant can view bills and edit settings they can view the journal and the balance divisions and transactions so what I want to say is that okay people who really are interested in the money like traders need to know all the history of the transactions um, let's see here producers probably do as well and for the moment that should be good uh, again, that just, just relates to how much activity you want to expose to all the people that have these roles. Personnel Manager can accept applications to the Corp and can award declarations and medals, but they cannot kick members from the Corp. So again, people who can invite but not uh, boot people out. Um, let's see, and award medals. So we'll just leave that 
there, we'll, we'll include diplomats as well in this case. Starbase Defense Operator can control weapon and electronic warfare batteries at the Corporation's starbases. So again, very relevant to people who are in charge of keeping a starbase. Um, defense Operator is also sort of a... it used to not be very frequently used because you had to train Anchoring 5 in order to get the skill to actually take control of Apostas guns. Um, now that's been reduced recently uh, to anchoring four, so a lot more people can have it. So if you do exist in a wormhole corp, you may in fact want the majority of people to be able to uh, to have that skill, uh, because if your post tower, if your control tower comes under attack, it's really nice to be able to control uh, what the guns are doing. Uh, so we'll give that we'll give that to logistics as well. Now, Starbase Fuel Technician can check the fuel state of the Starbases, but cannot, re pardon me, cannot uh, remove fuel, uh, so we'll make sure that Logistics can do that as well. Alright, so, we now have six roles that are roughly well-defined, and we still have all of these settings to go through. Yeah. So, carry on. Station Service, Factory Manager. The Factory Manager can install, cancel, deliver corporation manufacturing and research jobs using corporation assets, meaning blueprints and materials stored. They need to query the hangar access into the hangar divisions, and this must be combined with rent factory slot or rent research slot role to be of any use. So, obviously, uh, we're going to say logistics and producers need to be able to do that. Rent factory slot can rent a manufacturing slot on behalf of the corporation. Must be combined with the factory manager role and at least some hangar access to be of any use. So again, producers relevant. Uh, being able to rent an office can rent new offices. Does not need any wallet division access, so be careful when giving out this role. So what this is saying is that assuming that CCP hasn't changed how this role functions, you don't actually, you, you can basically rent offices maliciously, is what this is implying. And this would need to be tested, but essentially in the past it was discovered that someone could use this, use this uh, role in order to rent offices without the permission of uh, the CEO or director. So the only people that really matter for that are our logistics personnel. Rent research slot can rent a research slot on behalf of the corporation. It must be combined with the factory manager role and at least some hangar access. So I'm going to say that my producers might want to research. I don't have a research role here, but uh, at least give them the option. And logistics as well. Security officer can view corporation members' personal hangars and stations where the corporation has an office and can place items into personal hangars. So earlier on, when we were looking at the inventory, and people's member hangers. So this role affects being able to drag stuff from a hanger into a member hanger. And again, we're going to say logistics for that. Again, not very obvious by the by the title. Uh, let's see, station manager can edit settings for outposts, which relates to nullsec and conquerable stations, such as docking rights, availability of research. So if you're not in a nullsec corporation, this doesn't actually apply to you, but nevertheless we want someone to at least have it. And it doesn't apply to all the Starbase, but who knows, maybe they'll, they'll be the ones to take over Null for us. Trader can buy items from the market using the Corp Wallet, but only if combined with one or more of the accounting divisional roles. Can view the transaction log, but only if combined with the Junior Accountant role or the Account role. So again, this is where ARG CCP we need to have some idea of what we've done here because if this bo if this column isn't checked thankfully all of these people have that but essentially you can check you can have a mismatch of where these and these don't line up and then it just won't function so producer and trader is the important ones trader trader so this list is fairly short, but very important. So accounting divisional. 
So now here we have information that relates to the division, so the wallets that we have. So again, all these. So, let's see, accounting divisional. So now you can see here, these do not reflect the actual wallet divisions that we've given ourselves. So let's do a quick UI check if closing that and opening it up again works. And oh, look, it does. So when in doubt, close your UI. All right, so this should be fairly straightforward. Nobody deserves access to the master wallet. Uh, let's say these people need access to research and trading. Uh, we're going to say general. We're going to say anybody can access general. And then these are still left blank. So this allows people to not only um, not only use corp assets, but also to decide which division they can be in. So if these boxes are not checked, um, basically everyone will be able to see this one. Um, the trader role will be able to see these too. And if you don't have access to roles, this, this will not be populated. It will only show you the ones that uh, your role has access to. It won't even give you an error if you choose the wrong one. It just won't show you what you have. Right, your access. This is usually when people like to take a break. Uh, because at this point you're dealing with multiple, multiple checkboxes and they're so small <laughs> and there's so much clicking to do. So at this point I won't actually be going into particular details. We're just simply going to relate that query, it gives you the ability to look, take gives you the ability to pull, and all these names reflect the names that we've chosen uh, for our corporation hangers here. So, yeah. so we start from the top, so hangar access, so again headquarters relates to if in fact we have headquarters, uh, in our case we do, and we have an office, so this field is what that set is affecting to, it just happens to be the only office we have. And containers affect if there was, in fact, a container here. So let's just demonstrate that very quickly. We want to do station container. And station vault container is actually what we want. So we have access to those. I want to get three of those. Everything costs 100 disk because we're on the test server, in case you didn't know. So now we have... yes. So this is warning us that we may not have the access to take this out, even though we do have to put it in. So now you can see that we have these special vault uh, security containers uh, attached to our corporation hangers. And that is why uh, this section is relevant. So being able to access these containers and the containers in them. So there are multiple layers here, uh, and a lot of these are seen in the uni, where it's possible to both password protect these and make it impossible for them to be dragged out. So this is a matter of whether or not they can actually be locked in place. So only certain people, like say logistics, should have the ability to actually move containers out of individual hangers. And potentially Starbase, but we'll say logistics for now. Okay, now we're getting into the semantics. So hangar access base dat. So base dat is reflected here. So edits, general, so base. So this can be any office that you own. So if you had a multiple choices here, uh, those roles would only apply to that flag. It wouldn't apply to any other station that that player could dock into. And hangar access other. Hangar access other relates to, um, it's the same as headquarters, but it is offices that are not a base and are not headquarters. 
and primarily that relates to in space. So for example, anything that is anchored in space for a corporation or including star bases. Um, because these two settings only relate to stations, this by necessity has to relate to in space. So at a, at a corporate POS um, or just simply anchoring something for a corporation uh, in space if you have that ability. So layers upon layers uh, of tweaking to do depending on what you want. All right, and fortunately that is essentially it uh, for assigning roles. So we're going to save that and we're going to go to our list and now we have the ability to if there was somebody in our corporation we would have the option here to say alright instead of these all being green checks they would be empty boxes and I'd be able to say okay I want this person to be a trader I want this person to be personnel let's just double check if we have any applications I'm betting not that's fine all right. So again, yeah, if you're if you're a director, if you're a CEO, you will tend to have you know a lot of these options uh, automatically checked for you, and uh, it's just a matter of either having an alt that you can test with if you're really paranoid, or simply just you know asking people to be active, and uh, you know just sort of tweak their settings while they're online. That's also a possibility. So that is the fundamentals of title management. Um, there are ways to combine that, as we as we talked about, with you know whether or not you can access certain wallet divisions. Um, I had the very simple um, summary uh, that I gave someone uh, that I'll just reiterate. And we want. I just want to pull up my notes for that. <laughs> it's a good moment for a five minute nap if you're still hanging in there. There we go. So again, one of the one of the questions that I had was how do you set up your um, your wallet divisions uh, effectively? Um, by purpose, you know, like the question was, how do you make it so that a source of income will go into a wallet division? And essentially, you can only do that by controlling what people can do. So this is why setting up your divisions by function is extremely useful. So someone who is a trader, all of their money is going in and out of the trading wallet. And what my suggestion is, is uh, to know the inflow and outflow of what I call the money pots and having and then you as a as a corp leader are able to manage the transfer of funds as you need to so you would have essentially your you know director level uh, functions you would have you know you could potentially have a CEO wallet CEO wallet is usually the master but you could have your own private source of funds that only you have access to and you could juggle money in and out in that sense so my suggestion is to know inflows and outflows. So the internal inflow can be any division that you like. So that can include market sell orders and in-corp donations. Um, only players inside a corporation can choose which wallet that they give money to. If someone's outside of a corporation, it always goes in the master wallet. An internal outflow can be any division. Uh, that includes character transfers, so giving us from somebody uh, to somebody from a particular wallet, and then market buy orders. So if you're actually setting up uh, ways to ways for a trader to actually do some shopping, and they want to create a buy order, let's do this one. So then they have the option of the corp account that they have selected. So that's that's where that that outflow goes to. Uh, external outflow can be t can be from any division. Uh, that includes things like NPC bills and fees. Uh, again, we are talking about things that are in the wallet here for bills. So you can, like I say, you can select any division from that. Um, but you know, keeping it the master wallet is pretty consistent. And then external inflows 
uh, of funds can only be within the master wallet. So that includes taxes and out of corp do donations, as I said. So any taxes, any of our 2.5% tax rate will plop into the master wallet. So you do have quite a bit of functionality uh, and decision making uh, in terms of where you want your wallet divisions to be applied, um, how you want people to be able to use it. But it's not possible for you to say, for example, okay, um, any person in my corporation that wants to place a buy order, you know, wants to collect market fees, wants to do anything like that, I want that to all go into this wallet. You know, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that by function. You have to do that by roles. You have to say, okay, this person has to either only have access to a trading uh, division or they have to be taught that this is the one that they have to have selected. And if they have a different one selected, it's gonna screw things up. So this is where either limiting people's abilities, uh, such as done in EVE University, if you're uh, below a management level, um, you're only able to select you know, one or two wallets. Um, so limiting people's ability to do things that they shouldn't be doing, or simply training them uh, how you want it to be done. Those are the only two options you can't say Anytime somebody does something on the market or with a contract, I want it to go into X or Y division. You can't do that. All right. Um, that is the majority of role issues. Again, if you if you uh, get into a corporation where you can do uh, individual things, you might temporarily want to say, okay, temporarily I want this person to have an ability they don't normally have, and I don't want to tweak their title. Um, so that's why you might use role management. But again, as I say, even though it gets very, very dense, um, stick to title management if at all possible, because it's, it's much more consistent. It has less possibility to conflict with itself. All right, so let's wrap up these last two tabs here. So we have auditing. So this will just keep track of everything that's going on in your corp in terms of joins, in terms of uh, members and roles changing. And again, it allows you quite a lot of uh, filtering and searching. And, you know, maybe we're saving the best for the last medals. So we have decorations. Now, medals are the super fun stuff uh, when it comes to being a CEO. Uh, or someone in charge of in charge of doing that so we can say you know uh, blue metal of win something hokey <laughs> okay and very much like designing a corp logo, you just get a variety of clip art to work with. Um, some of it's actually actually quite nice, but as you can see, the choices still are limited. Um, so it's just a matter of how you choose to layer things. And then you get a slightly different set of swatches. And in this case, the swatches are pretty consistent. They're just all flat colors. So let's keep this fairly light. And then here you start to see, okay, there are individual sort of patterns and things you can do. So this is probably it's like some of the most fun you can have um, as far as just uh, futzing around with individual uh, clip art designs and things. Uh, and as you can see, all of these rows are effectively identical, but they layer on top of each other. And if you change the colors, you can see that they're actually affecting uh, individual parts. So you, you do have a fair bit of control here, even though they, it all looks the same at first blush. And you have actually quite a fair selection of metal types. Uh, let's go let's see, silver, let's start there. All basic met metallic colors. And again, this is this is all stacking things on top of each other, just as the corp logo was. So you just start choosing things based on size. That was not bad. This is the kind of thing that you know, if they if they were to improve, you know, some of the assets in this game, this would this would 
create quite a lot of content for people to make new metals. So you know, it's definitely a definitely a feature request worth uh, worth pursuing, I think. But again, we sort of have the same selection. This is the longest list, and there's no slider, so you just have to keep going, keep clicking through it. Let's see here. Let's make this one stand out a little bit more. Star, star's good. Three stars. Five stars are nice. And yeah, you have no no ability to scale or modify things. It's all just clip art stacking on top of each other. All right, so let's leave it at that and play OK. So your wallet only contains zero isk, but you require five million. Uh, metals are not cheap, but fortunately it gives us the option to do that. So I want to change my division to master wallets and resubmit. And there we go. And this takes a minute, it takes a little bit longer to populate, uh, especially on the test server, uh, because it's pulling together all these assets in. But anyway, that'll pop up. And uh, it's also worth mentioning that at this time, once you create a metal, it's permanent. You will never be able to delete this metal. You know, maybe in the future. But certainly for the last, you know, however many years this feature has been available, um, these medals are always there. Um, if you look at the full decorations list for Eve University, um, you'll see some uh, some examples uh, relating to that. But um, you know, the, the 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 warning here is that if you have a typo, that medal will always stay in your corp history with that typo. So, you know, be sure what you're doing. Um, if you have recipients here, you'll see that. Uh, in this menu, you can't actually award it. You have to go to a different one. I want to right-click and award decoration. That person can have that decoration. And cost five million to create it. Cost five million each time you award it. And you've received a medal. That's wonderful. There's a little text blurb there. And back to here, now we have our recipients. And that allows us to pull up the person. Let's see, there it is. So this is actually quite nice. Um, if you spend time looking at a lot of players and a lot of their decorations, and actually start, start to really look at kind of the, the way metals are used in the game, it's actually, I think, one of the most interesting parts of court management is being really creative with metals and uh, just sort of seeing what people like to, uh, like to acknowledge in the game. Um, and certainly the uh, the coveted uni ones uh, are great. Ah, now we're getting into CC time. Okay, so we are at about the two hour mark. Uh, that is the majority of what we need to cover uh, in this class. That is the majority of this interface. Oh, thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, I certainly hope this is, uh, this is archived and useful for you uh, as you start to start to delve more into this, uh, you know, this uh, hornet's nest of the UI. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of information online. Um, thankfully, it doesn't get updated often enough that it gets out of date. But, you know, certainly be, be wary that it is so complicated that the information you're reading might not be perfectly accurate. Um, there's always that possibility. And, uh, you know, for the most part, things are recoverable if you make a mistake. Um, certainly not if you, you know, if you have a month where you accidentally gave someone the wrong uh, permissions and they stole all your stuff. But um, you know, if you're spending a day trying to sort this out, um, there's very little that uh, that you'll actually do damage, I would say, to the corporation, especially if it's a smaller corporation. I'm just clicking around here, so. I'll take uh, one more quick break for uh, for questions, and uh, we'll see if anything uh, anything else can be gone into a bit more detail. Uh, but that is effectively the official end of the class. And thank you so much for coming. 
Um, there are a couple more details in terms of like if you're resigning as a CEO, um, you have that option in your right-click menu. You, you you simply choose someone to be your successor. Um, and there's there's cooldown timers for that kind of thing. But essentially, if you decide to quit a corporation and you're the last person out, uh, the game will assign that corporation as being closed. And you'll fairly often see that in people's corp histories. If you have rolls, you can enter these bulletins. Two hours, no one's applied to this corporation. I'm so sad. <laughs> All right, uh, one question from chat. Uh, Paxty asks, I thought that removing assembled containers from corp hangers required director permissions. Um, that sounds right. Uh, certainly, we've had that issue um, in the Wormhole campus. Um, I think that, again, it's like, let's double check what this take division is able to take from... Container access allows the member to take entire containers from the appropriate hangar at the office in which the corporation, okay, based on the role, um, but they cannot remove the container from the hangar. So the description that it says on the wiki says that having container access allows you to lift and move entire containers from the hangar given at the uh, at the location filter given. All items in the cargo containers category of the market are governed by these roles, all items ending in container as well as station vaults and station warehouses. So theoretically if that role is given based on this description that I'm reading um, is that that is an assignable role. Um, whether or not in game it actually works, that's another question. But purely based on purely based on the the information that I'm looking at here, um, it is an assignable role that someone can take out a hanger, uh, take out a container without being a director. But again, your mileage may vary. 